Hey guys, it's Brant, and I just want to say really quick, I really appreciate you guys watching my videos. Be sure to click subscribe and hit the notification button so you get notifications so you don't miss any content. Also, feel free to leave a thumbs up or leave a comment uh, and enjoy the video. Hey guys, it's Brant and I'm back with my friend Scott Rock here and he's been in previous videos with me before. Uh, if you haven't seen them, you're gonna, I'm going to put them at the very end of the video, uh, the links to those two at the very end of the video. I'm going to put those there so you can see them. And uh, also, Scott, if you don't know, if you've never seen him before, this is the first time because I picked up a lot of new subscribers so you might not have seen a video with Scott in it. He is the basis of a band uh, uh, called Throwdown Jones and uh, they're a really good band. Uh, if you look on my channel, I have some of the songs that I've actually filmed for them in concert, and I've put that on there, there too. So uh, if you want to check that out, you can just go down through my um, history, my timeline, and you can find any, any song that says Throw Down Jones. That's the band he's in, and uh, those are videos I actually shot and edited for them. So uh, so we're back today, and, and we're if in... You, if you need videos done, Brent is the guy. He's amazing. <laughs> Appreciate that. Uh, so... We're uh, in a different location today. Uh, if you probably, if you follow me on social media, I am on Facebook, I am on Twitter, I am on Instagram, and you follow me there. Sometimes you get little tidbits about where I may be going next and what I'm going to be doing next, and you can also get updates and everything. So I tweeted out and sent a picture out on Instagram of me going down the road, saying that I had a road trip to a destination that was yet to be seen in one of my us upcoming Kiss reviews. Well, this is the destination. Right now, we're in Scott's uh, Kiss lair his uh his kiss room and i'm telling you you're only seeing a quarter of it behind us uh, all the way around us in front of us is other stuff too while i've been setting up he's been showing me stuff and everything and it's just mind-boggling the amount of stuff that you have but what we're here to talk about today is we're going to we're here to talk about kisses uh it's their 18th studio album and their 37th release overall including compilation albums and uh, live albums and things like that and i'm talking about kisses psycho circus so let's get into it so it was produced by bruce fairbain and it was recorded from january to april of 1998 at a m studios in hollywood california and one-on-one -on -one studios in New York and it was released on September 22nd 1998 the album was recorded and released as a result of the highly successful 96 to 97 reunion tour the album was marketed as the first album by the original lineup since 1979's Dynasty and oddly enough the only the entire band will only appear on one track on the album and Peter only appeared on just as Peter only appeared on one track on Dynasty mm -hmm. it's kind of weird you know the last album that they all the band on Peter appeared on one track and now Peter is and the rest of the band only appear, really appearing on one song fully. Uh, it's rumored that the lack of contribution from Ace and Peter was was not due to the fact that they didn't have material. They both did. Uh, most of it was deemed by Paul and Gene to be unusable. There was also the lack of cohesion in the group. Peter and Ace were trying to renegotiate contracts at this time and Paul and Gene were not going to allow them to have equal partnership or contribution. They weren't going to allow them to become a band again. Um, it was kind of like, they would have kind of, if Kiss was still going now, I think it'd kind of be like they are now. It'd be Gene and Paul with Ace and Peter as employees. Kind of like Tommy and Eric are employees of Kiss, Ace mm -hmm. and Peter. Ace and Peter would have never been able to regain that, to get back in on that pie. It never would have been split equally four ways. Right. You know, never right. That never would have happened again. It would have been 80-20. It didn't even work with Vinnie Vincent. So. No, no. So, you know. Uh, uh, but Gene stated at one point, why would we? Why would they be equal partners? The band existed for many years without them. That was a straight, quote straight from Gene. Uh, and the cool thing about this, interesting thing about this album was they recorded this album on analog tape. They went back to tape and they recorded it on analog tape and then they transferred it to digital to do the mixing and the overdubs. Uh, so the album was um, the album debuted at number three on the U.S. Billboard Top 200. It spent 14 weeks on the charts. It was certified gold by the RIAA on uh, October 22nd, 1998. And um, 
Do you have anything you want to add? I mean, I, like, do you have anything when you want to add a bit a little about what was going on during this time? Because you're a Kiss fan during this time. Mm-hmm. I was too. And this was an exciting time because Kiss was back. Mm-hmm. You know, and we didn't care if they were equal partnership or whatever. We were just happy to have Ace and Peter back. And I remember the reunion tour. It was just an amazing tour. It was highly successful. But I just remember this album was basically released because after the band was back together, the first question out of everybody's mouth is the same question now that they're getting ready to retire. Currently, we're, you know, they just started the end of the road tour. I think they're just now getting ready to finish up their first month of tour dates. Mm-hmm. And everybody's like, is Kiss going to make new material? And Paul has actually said publicly, adamantly, no, we're not going to because the fans don't want it. You know, and I don't know if that's necessarily true. I mean, I'd like well, to if, say if Ace and Peter were involved, if Ace and Peter were involved, I think sure. I think the band, the, the fans would want it. Uh, well, I, I mean, for me, first and foremost, I'm a fan of the band and uh, and, and the brand, but at the same time, I, I do have a little bit of problem with what's going on now because um, to me, it's not true to Kiss and it's not true to Kiss fans that have been there since the beginning. Mm-hmm. I get it, you know, life goes on, you know, evolve or die. Gene has men- mentioned that before. But, I mean, for Psycho Circus, this was a great time to put Kiss back on the map for another 10 years. This was an opportunity for uh, to, to flood the market with merchandise, as they did in the 70s. Um, and, they know, di- and they did. Yeah, they, like, they nailed it perfectly. We were talking about, just before we started filming, we mm-hmm. were talking about the uh, Spencer's, the Spencer's deal with huge. merchandising they had. How they, I couldn't you know. go to the mall without poking my head in there mm-hmm. and uh, finding great deals and sales and, and just the things that, that I bought during that time. Oh, my gosh, incredible. Uh, besides that, I mean, Ace had his deal with Gibson mm-hmm. and Epiphone. Uh, I think Paul had his stint with uh, his guitar company. Gene was pushing his axe. Mm-hmm. Um, and at the time, Peter had something going on with... Uh, he started with DW, didn't he? Yes. I he think he's still with DW. DW. I mean, even though he's kind of officially retired. Sure. Retired. But this was at a time, too. It was it was at a, at a, at a time where they were getting new fans. Mm-hmm. Um, besides us that have been there from the 70s, there, there, was, uh, there was an age of fans that were starting to bud that um, right now they're going to see them yeah. on the end mm-hmm. of the road tour. Yeah. Um, oh my God! Yeah. It's Kiss. This is it. I want to see him before mm-hmm. they're done. So I mean, this actually was was the end, mm-hmm. if I'm not mistaken, because this was the last time that they got together as a band uh, to play live and to do uh, studio work. So yeah. this was it. They got it, together as the ultimate. This was this technically was the end of the road. The ultimate dysfunctional family. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, you know, like I said, I, I've I've come under fire for some of the videos I've made recently on the lip syncing and the tour, whether I'm going to go, whether I'm not going to go. And uh, some people have accused me that, you know, you're trying to derail the tour or, oh, you've already made your decision. You're just trying to get views or, oh, you, I don't, I don't (laughs) never do anything to be sensationalistic and I never do anything just to get views. If I make a video and it gets, this is doing that themselves. Yeah. If I make a video and it gets 50 views, I can turn around and make another video and you get a hundred thousand views. And, uh, you know, a video that I made in eight minutes sitting in my driveway got over, uh, you know, 10,000 views. And I can spend four days making a video right. and it get and it get 400 views. Yeah, this it's all sound, about what the people that's want exactly to right. watch. I really feel that they're doing that now. They're playing on the fans' heartstrings. Mm-hmm. They did this then because at that point, they were coming back together after years of being separated for whatever reason. Then they start tagging... Um, all these songs in regards to We Are One and when I mm-hmm. see my face looking back at me that's pulling on a fan's heartstring mm-hmm. you know the fans are happy to see them back together and I, I really feel at some point this is going to happen um, they're doing it now they're separated they don't like each other again and guess what they're going to get back together they're going to they're gonna tap into the fans heartstrings and next thing you know they're going to sell out Madison Square Garden for two weeks in a row I mean, I as the original band, yeah. I, I see something like that happening, and I believe that was that was their ploy back then for this mm-hmm. album. Yeah, a lot of people think it's about the dollar. A lot Kiss. of people, a lot of people think that Kiss is stupid, but I can tell you right mm-hmm. now that Gene Simmons and Paul Stanley are probably two of the smartest men that we know, and Gene Simmons is an astute businessman. 
Um, he, he's a, he's as much of, if not more, he's as much of a businessman as he is a musician. Right. And, well, we know that Paul runs this band. And we know that Paul runs this band. So ultimately, it's going to be what Paul wants. But, you know, if you're, if you're coming out on top, right now these guys are putting money into their retirement. And if you're, if you're, wanting, if you're getting ready to go out. That would be out, great, great grandkids' retirement. Yeah, it would be great, great grandkids' retirement. They're trying to kiss, you know, the end of the road. Uh, this is it, you know. And so um, they said it's going to be a celebration. I never expected Ace and Peter to be with the band the whole time just because Peter I don't think could do it at his age. Uh, I don't think Ace would want to do it because Ace is such Ace is such a headstrong individual. And Ace has the single most successful solo career out of all of them in the band. And I think personally that grinds Paul Stanley to his sure, balls. Sure, sure. I mean it grinds him. Even though Paul's a great, you know, he's working on his Soul Station stuff, and Paul Stanley's Live to Win. I've yet to review it, but I have listened to that album, and I was impressed by some of the stuff I heard on it. Uh, you know, but but Ace is not one of those people. He doesn't need Kiss. I know that he's been harping. Oh, you know, the only way I'm going to be back in is if I re- if I return to Kiss or if I regain my throne or whatever. I think that's just hearsay. I think I think, I think it's they're funny. building it up. Me and you have talked about how you got Ace out here harping all this stuff, and you got his wife or his partner that's throwing accusations at Gene and throwing accusations at Gene groped her, and the band tried to have Ace killed, and this is all sensationalism, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, and it took like Gene like two weeks to even rebut it, you know. And he just kind of, eh, you know, scraped it off his shoulder, and then Peter's sitting over here being quiet as a mouse, you know. It's just, I mean, just it's. I, I totally agree with you. Something's going to happen. We're going to see these four guys mm-hmm. back in makeup together on the same stage before this is all said and done. You can agree with us or not, but you're going to see it happen. Kiss and make up. But what we're going to talk about right now is the time that they did say would never happen, <laughs> that you would ever see these four guys together again. Remember, those you long-term Kiss fans, if this is your first Kiss album, that you that you bought when and this was your introduction to Kiss. You don't know too much of the history before this unless you've researched it. But this people is what they said would never happen. They never said they said this. They was they were adamant. They was as adamant as the Eagles were yep. when hell freezes over. And well, hell apparently show. froze over. Yeah, because they did rejoin. They did. And re- this was a this is a magnitude of merchandise that mm-hmm. dropped. I mean everything from name it. They they recreated the seventies tenfold Mm -hmm. yeah even down to the costumes i mean you know they didn't come up with new costumes like they did for this tour Mm -hmm. you know the for this tour and for the reunion tour they were using the throwback costumes Mm -hmm. i think they did the 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 love that's what people wanted they did the love gun for this Mm -hmm. and i think they did the destroyer era costumes Mm -hmm. for 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 the reunion tour so but yeah so we're going to talk about the packaging here and then we're going to get in talking about the songs uh so yeah the packaging has that weird this is my reissue it's not been opened but if I turn it this way, you can see how it does. And that's a plastic thing on the front of it. Um, and then on the back, it's just got pictures of the band. And uh, like I said, I can't show you the inside because it's not open. I've not opened it yet. And uh, it's kind of unrelated to the packaging. But uh, I, didn't, uh, I didn't get one of these when I went. I don't know if I got it or it kind of might have been stuff that got stolen. But uh, Scott has the, the tour book. For those of you who haven't seen the tour book, I don't I don't usually show tour books, but since we're here and uh, he has them, I'll flip through a little bit of the pages there. It's got some nice shots of the band. And you can find these tour books uh, online. If you look on eBay or you look on things you wouldn't normally think to look at, like Amazon, Etsy, uh, you know, you can find you can find these tour books from time to time. And all of my Kiss stuff is for sale, always, <laughs> except <laughs> yeah. a few things. <laughs> yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, so, so if you ever see, if you ever see anything in one of Scott's videos we make that, uh, you know, uh, yeah, Kiss merchandise. Yeah, we, we talked about that. I'm, I'm at the point in regards to merchandise. It's like I, I have so much stuff. It's like I just want to keep a few things that mean the world to me. There's Jean to base, yeah. and I don't know yeah. if you notice. There's a ba- there's a Jean base behind yeah. me there. Yep. And uh, like I said, he's actually met. Like I said, uh, we talked about this in previous videos. Mm-hmm. He's met Gene. There's Gene, and that was that was the uh, 
Was that the Psycho Circus tour? That was the 35. That was the 35? Yes, 2009. So, Matter of fact, to the day, October 17th, in Greenville, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. um, wow. Phenomenal. Completely phenomenal. That was an opportunity to... Uh, I got to sit with him in his hotel room, and uh, we, we just talked about everything. One of the most intelligent people that you can ever have a conversation with in regards to life, business, music, uh, name it. He's on it. And a matter of fact, you know, he's wearing the robe there, but he was mm -hmm. wearing the Adidas pants with boots. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's a whole other story. Yeah, we'll have to we'll have to sit down and get that story one of these days. Uh, cause I, I I've had several fans ask about you, like when you're gonna be in band, when you're gonna be in uh, uh more videos and everything, and they want more Scott. So thank you. We'll have to definitely have him back. Um, we love doing this. We're like I said, we're both Elvis fans. We're both Kiss fans. We get together, and it took me it took us almost like an hour and a half just to get ready to start filming today because we were just talking and looking around the room and everything, and reminiscing on things. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the tracks. Uh, of the album, so no, that's what a lot of you want to do, y'all. Y'all, somebody actually asked me if I could start putting a marker in the description where we start talking about the music, <laughs> and I was like, "No, yeah, I can I get, get it. it, I can get it, you know." But um, so we're gonna start talking about the tracks here. We're gonna start with the opening track, "Psycho Circus." <laughs> Uh, so, Psycho Circus, uh, I love this track. It's a great way to start an album. It's first track on the album. This is a collaboration between Paul and Curtis Kumo, who wrote a lot, who helped write Paul write a lot of the songs on uh, Carnival of Souls. Mm -hmm. Because you got to remember, Carnival of Souls was the album that they were working on when the whole reunion thing happened, and they shelved it, but then it got leaked, and then they put it out. So, Kiss just kind of, and I, we talked about this just leading up to the to the video. I really like the direction that Kiss was moving in with Revenge and Carnival of Souls. I mm -hmm. liked that we were looking at the, we were looking at a, a tour book he had. It was for Japan, and it was the Revenge. I think they were touring Revenge in Japan, and I was talking about how I just loved the way Gene looked with the hair down in his face and the goatee and the beard, and they all just looked like a rock band. They looked they like did. a legitimate rock band. Sounded like it. Sounded too. like a legitimate rock yeah. band. Yeah. And I really like the direction that that band, that co that combination of people, you know, Gene, was it commercial Paul, Eric Singer, yeah. and Bruce Kulick. And Bruce really got to spread his legs on the last two Kiss albums, especially mm -hmm. especially on Carnival Souls. That was basically Bruce Kulick's baby, and and Gene's baby. Um, and then it got it got cut short, you know. And then we never see Bruce again uh, after that. Um, so, but. Uh, I love the energy. Paul still sounded good. His voice still sounded good. Uh, he didn't sound strained and like he was pushing it. Uh, I hate that this is not a full band re recording because it's Tommy Thayer on the guitar and not Ace, and it's Calvin, Kevin Valentine, uh, not Peter. Kevin Valentine basically plays drums for Peter through this whole album, even on Peter's song that he sings. The only song that Ace, the, the only song that Peter plays drums on, is Ace's song "Into the Void." It's the only drum, it's the only song he plays drums on on the whole album, uh, but uh, even Bruce Kulick played bass for Gene on this one. Gene didn't even play bass on this song, uh, and uh, so Paul's the only Kiss original. Paul's the only Kiss member on this track, uh, and I don't understand why a reunion album that Ace and Peter were on, why they're not on all the songs. Why wasn't this a big discussion back then? Or I don't maybe know. it was, but I don't, it, it, I don't remember it wasn't, being part of it. It wasn't, really, it wasn't really known. Did anybody it, care? It came out, it came, either they, it wasn't known or they didn't care or it came out later. But they say it was because of this was the time, the reason why they say they're not on it, because, you know, they only got one song. Ace only got mm -hmm. one song. Peter only got one song. And, uh, and you know, I, I could understand Peter only getting one song. But the caliber of her, that Ace was at this time, he should have got more than one song. Uh, he actually did. He actually does get two songs on the Japan release, and we'll talk about that. But um, he should have got more songs. But they said that even then, if they got the songs they got, they should have all played on them. Right. And they said it was because of scheduling conflicts and because of contract negotiations. Well, we're not going to come record until this contract is agreed to and signed. And Gene and Paul was like. Okay, well, we'll hire somebody to play drums for you. So you know, and, and that's that. You know, that's how it was. 
so I love this song. It's a great way to start off the album. Even when I hear this song now, to the, and they've been they've been playing this song on the current tour, which I really liked. It's actually the one that I busted Paul Stanley for lip syncing on or using a backing track because he missed his he meant they missed their cue. Um, but I love this song. I just love that. Hello, here I am. Here we. I mean, I just love uh, everything about this song. It's a really good song. The only thing that does. Um, it gets a little long to me, and it does. There's certain parts of it that I don't like. Um, and so I don't score this a perfect 10, but I do score it pretty high. I score it an 8. So what do you think about Psycho You Circus? know, this is yeah, – I'm big on 10s. And, yeah. and this is one album that probably one, maybe two songs will get a 10 for me. This was a great show opener. And Paul knew what he was doing. We needed something that was going to captivate the crowd. We're going to make our stage show bigger than what, you know, it possibly can be in the past. And, you know, this was a great opportunity for them to, to sell a tour through an album. Um, had a pur- This song had a this, purpose. The song had a purpose. This, this album had a purpose. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, the things to follow, uh, such as the games, the merchandise. Mm-hmm. It was a great opportunity for them to uh, say, hey, we're going to go ahead and... Uh, we're gonna flood the market right now. Mm-hmm. So here's here's an album, here's a song that, you know, we're gonna open it all up with. Yeah. And this was uh, I, I'd give it a seven because it is a great song. Don't get yeah. me wrong, it's a great show opener. Uh, Paul's voice is great. Uh, I like the music that is played behind it. Mm-hmm. Uh, very raw sounding. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Bruce did a great job with this. Yeah, yeah, it wasn't over polished. It was clean. Right. But it it was clean and it was very well mixed. But it wasn't it wasn't too polished. And you know we're talking about that. You're talking about the merchandising. You were looking for him, and we couldn't find it. If he could have found it, we were actually going to open the video with the 3D glasses because y'all remember they put out the VHS tape of the Psycho Circus video. It was in 3D, and so it had the little 3D black and white glasses. And if you watch that video, it's almost like a movie that was originally in 3D. You can tell because there's a whole lot of this and a whole lot of stuff shooting at you. Hey, look at my Gibson. Look at my Gibson guitar coming right in your face. Yeah, you know, yeah. so Look at my so, axe. Yeah, so there was a lot of that. Um, so... But anyway, so yeah, you score this seven, I scored an eight. So we're gonna move on to the next track, track number two, Gene Song Within. I wanna see Now Within is another great track. It's a demon song. And mm-hmm. it's got the it's got the uh, it's got a sound to it's it. It's got the howl. It's got a sound to it. And I love the sound of this song. And I can tell, and I read this, and when I read it, I could tell. This is actually a leftover song from Carnival of Souls. Mm-hmm. It was originally written to go on Carnival of Souls, and it didn't make it. It has that dark feel, and I really like that Gene wrote it. Gene writes all his songs on this album. Now, some of them may not all be that good, uh, but he did write all of his songs on this album. So when you hear a Gene song on this album, he's the only writer. Uh but Bruce Killick did a great job. That backward stuff, the backward tracking that mm-hmm. um, Bruce Killick did on his song uh, uh, "Deep Inside of Me" or "Inside of Me" or whatever on off of uh, the Carnival Souls, which is my favorite al- song off that album. The backing, the reverse stuff at the beginning of this and the solo is, and that, uh, anything you hear that reverse, that's all Bruce. Mm-hmm. Bruce did that, um, and. Uh, I actually thought Eric Singer played the drums on this track. Um, no, it has Kevin. Mm-hmm. Uh, to me, uh, like I said, to me, this song's the highlight of the album. And yes, I know, uh, even back in 1998, it was not Ace who did that. I knew whenever I heard all that backwards tracking stuff, I'm like, that don't sound like something Ace would do. That sounds an awful lot like the same stuff that was on Carnival yeah, Souls. Yeah. and. I because thought, it was too. Ace didn't do a whole lot of tuning down. Uh, no. And that's, I mean, that was Carnival of Souls. The whole thing yeah, was brought down. Yeah. But yeah, that, that in regards to Ace, that, from the get-go, I, that's not Ace. Yeah. I, I, you know, I didn't care at the time. They were they made an album together. They made an album. I didn't they made care. A I didn't care who was on it at the time. They uh, made a product, and not all the ingredients was in every, mm-hmm. every course of right. the product. It was water in the desert, for um, sure. But I really like Within. I score Within a 9. It's probably, like I said, it's Probably one of my favorite songs on the album. Right. I really love the way it this sounds. is. This is one of my favorites as well, um, just for the fact that it was it was second and it was Gene and it was in your face. I love the the breakdown. Mm-hmm. I don't know what he says, pull or something yeah. like that when the, the when the drums yeah. take off and that when that 
uh, oh when it does that i love that yeah and that was so off the mark for kiss uh as a group as ace and peter gene and paul that was so off the mark for mm-hmm. them to do stuff like this and uh, gene's voice on this i gene's vocals were outstanding very mm-hmm. catchy uh smooth but he had the rasp going on i yeah i would give this one about an eight mm-hmm Definitely. You're talking about that breakdown. He's playing a real nice bass part there, too. He's just mm-hmm. like, don't, 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 don't. I mean, he's yeah. just, he's just yeah. hammering the bass yeah. real nice and low. Uh, so, uh, yeah, so that's, that's we're, we're kind of agreeing so far on this mm-hmm. album. So I'm, I'm, I'm looking, whenever I'm with somebody, I'm always looking for that song where they go this way and I go this way or I go this way it's, and they go this way. It's coming up, I guarantee but you. I, I always <laughs> love whenever that happens because a lot of people, I, I love the difference in the views. A lot of people yeah. think that I don't like difference in views. I appreciate Different opinions. Well, different we talked about that on Revenge. Yeah, you know that yeah. that was one of my favorite albums. Yeah, so and yeah, we differed on a lot of songs <laughs> on that one. So the next song we're gonna go to is back to Paul. We're gonna go to Pledge Allegiance to the State. Oh, the With this song, I mean, the good songs just keep coming. We had a good, mm-hmm. strong opener, and then we got a Gene song out of the way, and now we're and now we're back to a Paul song. And the good songs just keep coming. Uh, I love this. This is that anthem, um, and you can tell just by the way it starts, that da 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 da, and the way just Paul starts singing, and they've got that sustained where they don't really kick the song in. Paul's just singing, and ba- and Gene's playing some bass here and there, and the drums are just hitting here and there. And it don't really kick in until he gets to that part where he goes, yeah, we paid the price, or whatever, you know. Um, but I like the feel of this song. It's that anthem. It's the anthem that this album needs. It's the anthem mm-hmm. that the album deserves. It's a gl- it's a great collab. This is a collaboration. Paul had somebody help him write every song. Uh, it's Paul, Curtis, Kumo, and Holly Knight. And Holly Knight actually, Paul and Curtis wrote the song. Then they had Holly Knight come in and kind of polish it up and finish it up. She's kind of like Michael Bolton. She could come in and, or Brian Adams, she could come in and help help them finish the song up and put the finishing touches on it. Uh, once again, it's Tommy on the solo, Kevin on the drums. But it's still a great song. And I think this is probably the song. You said he sounds really good on, uh, on Psycho Circus. Mm-hmm. I think he sounds... I, he sounds amazing on Pledge Allegiance to the State. Just that whole, I pledge allegiance to the state. And it, hey, hey, it goes right. after. I really like State of Rock and Roll or, or Pledge Allegiance to the State. I like it, so I'm scoring it at eight. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, to me, it was uh, a little gimmicky. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Paul sounded great. Uh, it wasn't one of my favorites. Um, it was a filler song for me. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, let's, let's move on to the next one. Mm-hmm. I, I wasn't, um, listen... Kiss has tried to recapture rock and roll all night mm-hmm. in a lot of albums. Mm-hmm. There's always been that one song that's going to be their staple song that, you know, they're going to play the last song. Well, it never works out because mm-hmm. people aren't going to let them play anything but rock and roll all night. Um, it, it was okay. I mean, it, in the context of the album, I, I you know, I'd give it a six. Okay. All right. A little bit different there. Mm-hmm. So we're eight and a six, but at least you don't hate it. Uh, so... Now we're going to move on to the next track, and we'll get to our first Ace song, and I know we've all been waiting for it, uh, Into the Void. Caught like a magnet, and I'm being pulled. Into the void. I want to get away, get away. So four songs in before we get to the one and only song that all four members actually play on. This is the only song that all four members actually play on. Uh, that's... Peter on the drums, Ace mm-hmm. on the guitars. And to me, the guitars sound like they're all Ace. I don't hear any Paul sounding. No, he's got that run, that woo. Yeah, I don't hear any of the Paul sounding mm-hmm. stuff in this. Mm-hmm. This is one of those mm-hmm. things that could have just been Ace and Peter and Gene to me. Even just the sound of the guitars, you can hear it's just that fat Les Paul sound, that sloppy kind of playing that Ace does. Yeah. Um, uh, but even the vocals in the background all sound like Ace. <laughs> uh, this is a great song. It's my it's the ideal type of song you wouldn't expect. It's the kind of it's the ideal kind of song you would expect from Ace, with all of his trademark vocal and guitar riffs and the the way he sings his Ace almost uses his voice as an instrument. He has a very definitive singing style, uh, and in my opinion, 
it, this to me is the most old school Kiss sounding yeah, it's, it's rocking the most sloppiest song, song on, the, on album. the album. It's not overproduced. It's Mm-mm. raw. Um, and I didn't know back then who played on played yeah. what on the albums, but I always thought this was the most sloppiest from a musical standpoint. Right. And now that I know that they all played on it, it right. makes sense. Um, and like you were talking about with Paul's guitar, I didn't hear a bunch of it. Mm-mm. I didn't hear that um, in there. But Ace, this is this is a good song, just for the simple fact that they all played on it. Mm-hmm. Um, back then, I would have given it a five, mm-hmm. but now that this information comes out, I would definitely give it an eight. Okay, well, this is probably this is probably tied with my favorite song for the album. Uh, within uh, with with within, I score this one a nine two. So um, I really like this song. So now we're going to go to the next track. We're going to go to a Gene song. We're going to go to We Are One. Now, you had mentioned earlier that you felt like that uh, Pledge Allegiance to the State was one, it was kind of, it was kind of gimmicky, and mm-hmm. it was kind of, they were still trying to capture in on an anthem and trying to get an anthem for, you know, to replace Rock and Roll Night. This one, to me, the, the context of the song, the way the song kind of sounds, and who's actually singing the song, and what has, what they're singing it just kind of comes to me. I remember the very first time I heard this song, this song started. I'm like, oh, we're back to a Paul song. And then Gene started singing. And I was like, really? And then they get to that solo. We are one. And I see my face looking back at And I'm sitting here going. <laughs> okay, we are one. We are one. You know, I'm going to tell you why face. this is my number 10 here in I just a minute. But I, I see completely my face looking back at that. me. I completely uh, understand that. I know this song, and, I let me, and I've got it written here. I know this song is a fan favorite. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I know it is. I've heard too many people say, love that song. It's favorite song on the album. I love that song. But for probably individual reasons. Yeah, but I fall on the other side of the fence in this, and I'm not a fan of this song at all. Uh, this sounds like a Paul song, as mm-hmm. I said. Uh, it might have worked better with Paul singing it, but I, I definitely, I'm not, no, I'm not sure, you know, I don't really like this song, so... I score this song a three. So let me go ahead and hear you. Well, here we go, because we're on (laughs) opposite ends of the spectrum. I give this a Mm ten, and I'll tell you why. Not so much that it's it's the music. This was at the time where CDs were very popular, and um, that was the main source of music for Mm -hmm. being in the car. Mm -hmm. Um, You didn't have digital audio back then, you know, being able to play whatever you want, when you want. So this was at a time my daughter was... uh, she was two, so I played this a lot, two, three years old. My daughter was singing Beth at two years old. Well, when we would drive in the car, this was one of those songs that she would say, play again. We would sing this together, mm-hmm. and you'd hear her. I mean, two, three-year-old little girl singing We Are One Yeah, was amazing. This song will forever be my favorite Um Kiss song that reminds me of my daughter. Right. Besides Beth, because somewhere there's a video of her singing Beth mm-hmm. uh, at two years old. So uh, this for me has more of a sentimental um, thing than anything else. Yeah. From a Kiss standpoint, hmm. but from right. a music standpoint in regards to memories with my daughter, right. This was this was an amazing time uh, for for my daughter to to actually hear. I mean, she's been listening to Kiss. With uh, when she was in the womb, mm-hmm. both of them got mm-hmm. to listen to Kiss when it was in the womb. Yeah, I'm that type of nerd. <laughs> um, anyway, but it was it was just I mean the memories that come rushing back in regards to you know we're driving down the road and and you know we would get in the car after I would pick her up and that was the first song she wanted to hear. Right. And we would just we'd sing along together and uh, I'd look back in the mirror and uh, we are one, see your face looking back at me, and I'm looking in the mirror, and, right. and she put her hand up, <laughs> um, and just sing, and sometimes that, that would just, that music would put her to sleep, Right. and that was, I mean, that right there in itself is a 10 for me. So now, I, I, I get it, and, and to me, this was one of those songs, besides the sentimental value, that really, they really tried to tug on the heartstrings they did. of these guys, of the fans. This is definitely one that they tried to do it. Mm-hmm. See your face looking back at me. Mm-hmm. That's and, an ultimate reference to a fan. And they did it a lot on this album. We'll hit some more songs. They did it a lot right. on this album. This is their. This was their return to the fans, and they tried to 
reunite themselves and with yes. the fan. We are one. Yes. You're in the psycho circus. You know, they didn't, you notice that, the yeah. song, you're in the psycho circus. I say welcome to the show. Well, this is. I've been waiting here to be your guide. I mean, you know. We are one is, and I'm glad Gene's singing it, because the conversations that I've had with Gene, you will not find another guy in that band, in my opinion, this is my opinion, um, that is more heartfelt for the fans. Mm -hmm. He gets teary-eyed talking about fans. His heart is so huge. And I believe when he sings that song, it's true to the bone. Yeah. Because when I see my face looking back at me, we are one. Well, Kiss isn't one. We know that. Gene, with his fans, are one. Yeah. He does just, not take that lightly. So we're going to go on to... Uh, what? So you scored We Are One a 10. I scored it a this 3. This is a 10. Not for, not for a Kiss standpoint. Right. Just, just because sentimental of... value. Uh, so we're going to go on to the next track. Uh, we're going to go on to You Wanted the Best. The fans wanted us to play. We hear and we obey. You wanted the best. Yeah. You got it. Now, You Wanted the Best is the first Kiss song that all four, member, all four members sang lead parts on. Uh, this song uh, is good, but it's kind of funny to me. They were talking about all the crosstalk between what had happened and the past years, you know, they're like, basically the verses are all like, you know, they're, they're squabbling. But then they get to the verse and Paul says, everything's gotten way out of hand, but your wish is our command. You wanted the best. You've got the best. Because it was about the fans. Uh, but it was more about the buck. But they were cross-talking what, what's happened in past years. And now here we are in 2019, the end of the road tour, and the allegations are flying again. <laughs> Uh, and it's also funny to me that they all sing on this song, but Peter don't play the drums. Uh, Kevin did. And at least Ace played the solo. Um, and like I said, this is a good song. This is one of those another songs that's like, hey, <clears throat> this is in trying to incorporate the fan. You, they say a lot of you, you, you know, mm -hmm. you wanted the best. You got the best. That's the line that's yeah. opened them up from the very beginning. The hottest band in the world, Kiss. You wanted the best. You wanted the best. You got it. Then you got the best. And I like that. Uh, what a great idea. Uh, I mean, yeah. Uh, it's a great idea. I like the song. I mean, it's... Because it's, what they do at every show, you want right, the best. Right. They needed to have a song. So, I like it, so I, I score it, you know, I score it a seven. That's about the mark I would give it. Mm -hmm. um, there was, you know, other than um, Within mm -hmm. and one of the next songs coming up, it was really hard to, you know, look at this as a not overproduced Kiss album, mm -hmm. which it was. But just the simple fact they're on the same out, all four faces on the same album again. Mm -hmm. I didn't. I really didn't care. Right. You know, I listened to this album over and over at my daughter's request, and um, yeah, it grew on me. At first, I was it was a little soft. Right. Uh, but this song in particular was, you know, it was upbeat. You know, got you thinking about going to see them. Right. I think it that was their it objective. It definitely, it definitely did. It got, it got you riled up. If you, if you had seen them on the reunion tour, mm -hmm. then this album was going to get you fired up to go right. see them on the following tour. Right. You know. But that was one of those songs. Oh wow! I can't wait to see them. Right. Oh, they're going to be on here TV. Oh, I got to watch that. Or they're going to be somewhere. Yeah, yeah. It was a motivating album. Mm -hmm. Merchandise. So, mer so, I score seven. He scores seven. We mm -hmm. see eye to eye on that one. So we're going to go into the next song, a Paul song. Raise your glasses. <laughs> Raise Your Glasses is a pretty good song. It's not as good as some of the songs on the earlier album as I feel. I dig the verses and the chorus. It's a typical Paul song. But this is another one of those songs where I, they're trying to definitely keep the band, keep, keep the fans, you know, everyone around your around the nation, raise your glasses. Stand, I love it. Stand them proud because yeah. we're the champions. Raise your glasses. I love it. This is like a, a feel good song. It's a toast to the fans, you know. It's mm -hmm. like, you know... It's it it's a toast to the fans about what Kiss had accomplished. It's kind of a toast to themselves, mm -hmm. but that the fans was involved in it, and it was you know let's raise our glasses, let's toast this because. And I like how Gene's vocals are out front yeah. during the chorus too. Yeah, yeah, they definitely really are. And the bridge to the chorus is unique too, where Paul Paul does that that scream where it carries over from yeah the, the bridge to the chorus. I I absolutely love this song, uh, in regards to the music. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, 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 listen. Everybody who's watching this right now is a Kiss fan. Otherwise, you're not watching this. And, I mean, 
really this this was an opportunity for kiss to you know come together in the media not mm-hmm. necessarily on the album mm-hmm. and portray themselves as as a relevant band again mm-hmm. um and not not spending a lot of time on you know the past right this was a step towards the future for them and obviously it paid off right it really has and this was a great song uh for that um another song that pulled on your heartstring right. go out and buy the merchandise and come see us on tour so raise your glasses um uh just finishing up some notes here uh this is another collaboration between paul and holly knight uh holly knight helped write this uh, it's kevin on the drums and tommy on the guitar solo but i like this song uh so uh raise your glasses i scored a six so how do you feel about that I, i'd give it an eight this was one of my favorite songs on okay the album. just just it was a great opportunity for for paul to show mm-hmm. he still has a little bit left in him mm-hmm. like i said paul's voice does still sound really good on this album mm-hmm. um well live too well is it live well anyway. yeah yeah. I'm taking shots at that because if you're a Kiss fan, you don't need video to to prove you got it. You get the right idea. So the Super. next track for is Peter finally found my way. I finally found my way to you. Remember how we used to hide away. And I know this song was written by Paul Stanley and Bob Ezrin for Peter. Because Peter had written songs for the album, but it was determined that they weren't good enough. And I, I like this song, but I like parts of it. Uh, I like especially the bridge where Peter and Paul sing together that whole, mm-hmm. Remember how we used to hide, hide away. Mm-hmm. Um, and you, see, you hear Paul's voice come through real strong there. I like um, the best part. That's the best part of the song to me. But it's not, it's not really fully right. enough to redeem it. Uh, I'd hate that they always, they got into a pattern of always sticking Peter with the sappy songs, sticking him with Hard Luck Woman, sticking him with Beth, sticking him with, you know, I mean, the last, I mean, he had Dirty Living, which I thought was kind mm-hmm. of a rocker. It's one of the good, it's one of the good songs on uh, uh, Dynasty. Um, but Peter's got a voice that's built for, oh, yes, the uh, earlier for, for rock and roll. Now, I don't know if, I don't mm-hmm. know how Peter's voice, he didn't, he sounded, I don't know if he was, if you listen to him singing on this song, mm-hmm. I don't know if he was produced to sound the way he does because it's a love song or if that's the shape his voice was in whenever he recorded it. But he sounds kind of shaky in some parts. Um, He sounds very shaky in some parts. But he could have been produced to be that way. Maybe he was emotional. Uh, uh, But it's... uh, you know, it's Peter's thing. You know, we, what I would like to see was a black diamond or nothing to lose or see him on a rocker or something. Uh, leave the ballads for Paul is what I put in my notes. But Kevin played the drums on this one. So, you know, he's singing on a song he didn't even play the drums on. Uh, but I didn't know this back in the day. None of us did. Bob Ezrin played a Fender Rhodes on the song and Shelley Berg played acoustic piano as well as conducted the orchestra. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, like I said, it's a good song. I mean, I'm not bashing it too much. I mean, it's a good song. It's uh, It's got great meaning behind it. I mean, it's a love song, you know, and it's a reminiscing song. Remember how we used to hide away. We'd share the secrets of our soul. I mean, like I said, my favorite part of, my, some of my favorite lyrics in this song is the, 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 the pre-chorus and the chorus and the bridge and stuff like that. Um, I'm just not a, I'm not a big fan of the, so many people tried to help me on my way, you know. So he was set, time see, this is a merchandise so song. Much left to say. He's setting himself up for a book right. You know, I mean, I'm I sitting mean, here going, it's like, it's like him saying, hey, yeah. my bad, I'm sorry I left Kiss, and I'm sorry I screwed up and was, you know, addicted, got people interested addic- in his addicted book, to drugs, and, and yeah. I got kicked out of Kiss, and got you, fired. and You can't deny this was a... An album that was for the fans. Yeah. Because this musically was not an album that... And now he's back in Kiss, back in Kiss, and he's finally found his way to you. Um, you know, <laughs> and so uh, it could be a love song, and it could be finding his way back to the fans, but I'm not the biggest fan of it, uh, but I still score it a five. I mean, I do like it. There's some aspects of it I really like. I like it. No. Um, yeah, you're right. I never thought about it that way, but this should be a Paul song. Mm-hmm. And, uh, yeah, Peter should have You Wanted the Best. Yeah, P- oh, yeah. He Peter should have the lead on that. Yeah, Peter could have. That, just that part where he comes in is, 
don't show your face. I mean, yeah. it's like, oh, you know, you know, it, you know. Don't give me glances. Don't give me lies. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean that, is, that should have been. He goal. still had that rocking voice. I mean, yeah. well, I love Gene Kelly in there though. Don't I, give I, me sweet <laughs> talk, Pete. Just testify. Yeah, yeah. Gene telling somebody to testify. Yeah, right. uh, uh, you know, I give this. I give this one uh, a six, seven. I, I, you know, I, I'm seeing a lot of similar scores here, mm -hmm. and um, I and I see the reason why. I mean, because this was an album that was, like I said, it was for the fans. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an album that, that took too much thought. It was a product made for the fans, and it had a calculated, it was a calculated effort, and it had a calculated purpose. It, to my opinion, this was another piece, mm -hmm. piece of merchandise. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, so yeah, so we're pretty much the same on that. So we're going to go back to, uh, we're going to actually get a Paul song, and we're going to go to Dreamin'. Now, we were talking about this earlier. You were saying, what's the, the is dreaming the song that sounds like Alice Cooper? And it does. It sounds an awful lot like 18. Uh, I'm actually glad Peter and Ace didn't play on this one. Uh, I'm not really a fan of it. Um, I don't. I hate that Bruce Kulick had so much input on this as far as co-writing, playing bass, and playing rhythm guitar. I mean, this was a, this was a Bruce Kulick song. This was a song that was kind of written during the Carnival of Souls era, but it didn't fit the uh, vibe of the Carnival Souls album. Uh, wasn't played in Drop D. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, but I'm not a big fan of this song at all. I know this is the one we're probably going to go in opposite directions on, but this is probably close to being one of my least favorite songs on the album. Even though there are parts about it I do like, um, it's just I kind of tune out on this one. It doesn't, it doesn't keep me. And so I scored mm -hmm. a 2. Well, I'm, I'm going to the other end of the spectrum this is one of the songs where where it caught my attention it was a familiar sounding song mm -hmm. back then i didn't know the whole thing about alice you know and, and I, I get it you know mm -hmm. kind of 18 yeah. but this to me was the most musical song mm -hmm. the most thought that went into any song in here it, this wasn't about the fans this was raw this mm -hmm. was paul stanley at 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 his best for that time um, it almost sounded like a song that could have been on his solo album. Yes, yes I mean yes, it yes. sounded like a 1978 Paul Stanley solo album kind but of song. It was, I mean, him screaming, "I am only dreaming." A dream, wow, man. I mean, great, yeah. and and the music behind it, and I get the whole Alice Cooper catch, uh, eighteen, do 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 do, and right. and those parts, I I get it, and you know what? That's what captivated me to this song. I was like, wow. I mm -hmm. felt comfort in the song, mm -hmm. knowing that this sounded raw, this sounded real. Mm -hmm. uh, you go through every track on this song up until here. It sounds it was, manuf it was, it was man manufactured. manufactured. It was fabricated just because we're getting back together. This song was... Ace sang an Ace song. It was you know? so far off the mark compared to the other songs. Right. So. Peter sang a Beth song mm -hmm. or a Hard Luck Woman song. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so far as Gene has done a Gene yeah. song and Paul's done Paul songs. Yeah, so as far as uh, Dreaming goes, you know, like I said, it's it. I can see I can see both of our points of opinion on that. I, I really can. I, I'd go with a 10 on this yeah. for me. Yeah. Okay. So we got a 10 there. We got two here. So once again, we go back and forth. And uh, I don't know how he's going to feel about the last song, but I can kind of preview that it's not going to get much better for me. But anyway, we're going to go to the last track on the album, uh, Journey of a Thousand Years. Now, I remember the first time this song kind of, I remember I was listening to the tracks going down through, and I, I was looking on the back of the tracks, and I was looking at the lyrics and listening to each song as it was coming through. I remember when I got, when I got this, I had it on CD, uh, and uh, remember listening through it. I, I was waiting for something to rock, and I think this was more of the same thing, but Gene was going to take a hand at it this time. Because right. this really didn't have anything to do with the fans. Um, I just never connected with this song. It just There's parts of it I like. I do like the... It's a very grandiose sounding song, and it's got the drums in it. Almost sounds like kind of a marching beat, drums. Don't you um, think now that if people wanted another album, 
with Ace and Peter, they would get the exact same thing as this album. I do. I do. I think I think if, even if we get an album with Ace and Peter, we're not going to get what we expect we're going to get. We're not going to get anything prior to Love Gun. No. No. No, we're not. But um, I'm I, not... I, I, I would just about guarantee that one. Now, I will not say I guarantee they will never get back together because I think that's inevitable. Um that's going to happen at some point, but I do not believe that they will ever make an album like they did prior to Love Gun. Yeah. But I guarantee you there will be a promoter at some point that says, we're going to offer you this if the four of you get back together and mm -hmm. do this. Mm -hmm. That's going to happen. And uh, again, money will talk. They'll have an extended stint in one spot, you know, they'll, yeah. a, a week, a week at the garden or, you know, whatever. They'll do something. Well, if it's truly about the fans, we will see it happen. Yeah. Because okay. we are one. Right, we're one. So, but, yeah, so I scored the last song on the album, I scored a one. I liked it. Just it. Feels, it feels like, to me, it just peters the album out once again. It does. And, again, this this album was was not about the band making quality music. Um, I do believe this was a song that, you know, captured Gene and him saying, I want this song on here. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Mm -hmm. Whether or not it was a great song for the album. Because it doesn't sound like it's part of the album. Mm -mm. Um, I do believe, again, this this was a, uh, an album that was put together uh, poorly. I believe it was more of a piece of merchandise than musical thought. Mm -hmm. Because it wasn't anything special. Um, yeah, it has its moments. Don't mm -hmm. get me wrong. It, was, it sold a tour. It sold merchandise. And that's what it was for. That's what it, it served That's its what people wanted. And you know what? We're gonna we're gonna give you what you wanted, but we're gonna give you this so you'll go do this and right, exactly. I totally agree. Well, on my scoring scale, uh, if you add all my scores up of the songs, uh, I score uh, I give it a total of fifty eight, and if you divide that by ten, that's a five point eight. I'm gonna put it up on my screen here so uh, so you can see where it falls. I don't have that in front of me right now. But you can see where it falls with uh, with all my other KISS videos that I've done to this mm -hmm. point in time. So Japan got a bonus track on their albums. They got a, a track by Ace called In Your Face. I'm not going to, really going to rate it. Um, but if it had made it to the official album lineup, it would have been the hardest song on the album. Uh, it, would have been the, it would have been the most post-KISS Ace Frehley uh, solo album sounding song. It sounded like an Ace solo album. That just that whole riff, that whole da 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 da. Uh, it was totally weird that it was written by Gene. And it's funny in retrospect. In the early years of Kiss, it was Gene who sang a lot of Ace's songs, and now here's Ace singing a Gene song. And you can tell the song didn't get the same production as and polishing love as the rest of the tracks. It's a good thing and a bad thing at the same time. It's an okay song. I thought it was better than some of the tracks on, on the second side of Psycho Circus. They could have polished it a little more, and it would have been on this album. And for Ace to only have one song on this album, I'm okay with Peter only having one song, because even up to his very last album he was on the band with, Dynasty, he had one song, Dirty Living. Mm -hmm. Ace should have at least had two songs, in my opinion. There should have at least been two. So uh, let's do um, final thoughts on this album. Uh, I always let my guests go first. I think you've kind of already given a little bit of your final thoughts, yeah. but just wrapping it up. I, I think for, for me, this was, this was a, yeah, as a fan from the 70s, and I get to see my boys on the album together again. Yeah, this was great. This was an emotional album. This was an emotional time for Kiss. Okay, they just finished up a gargantuan tour of, of a reunion. Now they're wanting to call it quits at the same time after releasing this. I was in 2000, I think they were talking about, you know, mm -hmm. they want to go out and do their own things. Matter of fact, I saw an interview with Ace uh, from 2000 uh, talking about that. They want to go out and do their own thing. But, you know, it didn't matter to me because I'm a fan of the band. I'm a fan of the brand, uh, obviously, for, for reasons. Right. Um, I'm a fan. I'll always be a fan. For my, for, uh, for my take on it, Kiss it will always be 1970-something. Mm -hmm. Kiss will always be 70-something. Everything that came after, from Dynasty on, it, it, it became different. Mm -hmm. and, and I get it. But, you know, being fortunate enough to see them back in the 70s live, nothing compares. No tour of theirs compares. 
to the tour from the 70s. Mm -hmm. Kiss will always be 1970 something. So this album was, to me, this was just a byproduct of merchandise. Mm -hmm. And uh, they were paid to make an album. And uh, that's what it was to me. Yeah. My final thoughts on that is just about almost verbatim. Uh, I think it's a good album. Um, I think it's uh, it's it's not a great album. Uh, I'm glad we got it. I'm glad that it did come out during this time. I mean, I'm glad that there was an album that all four of these guys' faces are on, even though they didn't all four play on it all the time. But it was Ace, Peter, Gene, and Paul. Right. It was Ace, Peter, not Tommy, Gene, right. Eric. It was no Ace, Peter, Gene, and Paul. It was the band mm -hmm. back together uh, as much as that you could be back together. Um, and and they put out a product that you know that I'm I'm thankful for it. Um, mm -hmm. It's not an album I hate, but uh, you're right. And what we've talked about through the review and what we've talked about in your final thoughts is that it, it was it is a it's the first it's one of the first albums that I feel like by Kiss was actually a product. It was it was a piece of merchandise just like that bottle of wine he's got back there or the Gene Simmons you know little figurine down here or the lamp. This behind me. This could just as easily have been one of those things. It was a it was a product that was manufactured for a specific purpose. The songs on it told you what that purpose is. It was, hey, here we are, we're back for a limited engagement, and you're the fans, and let's just all hug and come to the shows. You know, if you didn't if you didn't catch the reunion, I mean, the show was like that. Yeah, in three D. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, mean it was, you know, it was, and it, and it set the stage for this is what we're going to do on this tour. We're going to do a psycho circus. You know. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, but all in all, it is what it is. Um, and, uh, you know, my rating speaks for how I feel about it. And you see where it fell, you saw earlier where it fell on my scale. But, yes, yeah, so we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Um, Scott, I really appreciate you being back, man. I always Absolutely. have the best time with you. Thanks. And, uh, thank you. We're going to wrap this thank up. Thank you, guys. And we're going to wrap this up. And I'm going to film, I'm going to hang out here a little bit more. And I'm going to film a video that you can probably catch later on on the channel of, looking around this amazing room and looking at some of this stuff in here and, and, you know, just letting him talk about it. But anyway, I'm Brant with In My Head Channel, and I appreciate you watching, and we'll catch you next time. Mm -hmm.